Monster Dragoons, my name is Alex, welcome back to Asterix and Obelix Slap Them All. In the last video, we managed to get, we managed to get introduced to the gameplay along with what is going on in this particular level. And that is, we are trying to uh, basically deliver a barrel of potion to a uh, British village. Now, this potion is meant to enhance everyone's uh, strength, speed, stamina, you know, uh, fucking the works. So, you know. Uh, but uh, something that I didn't mention in the last video was actually the uh, types of enemies. And <laughs> uh, believe me, by the end of this game, oh, they they gave me a... They, they really made me angry. <laughs> Okay, so let me start with the Roman faction real quick, right? So the Roman faction has these uh, tall, lanky guys, right? Now, as I'm sure you saw just a minute ago, they can throw spears. And those spears are very annoying because they can be thrown at halfway across the screen, right? So when the Romans are here, um, um, I ought to go for them first, you know, just to get... Just to get the annoyance factor out of the way real quick. Now, uh, uh, you can't see the um, enemy health, but it does vary from time to time, so, you know. Uh, anyway. Uh, the uh, regular Romans and the fat ones don't really have much of a difference, I find. Like, maybe one has more health, but I don't really know. Um, anyway. But, uh, yeah, the Romans are not too, too bad. Just don't let them get behind you or don't take too long trying to attack them. Because they will do that, you know. They will, like, uh, stab you with the spear. But, eh, it's whatever. Uh, then, uh, then you have the bandits, right? Uh, uh, the bandits come in a, a couple of flavors. You got the uh, small guys that kind of look like uh, rogues from, that kind of look like rogues from a JRPG or something, and then you got the big guys that look like Aladdin if he if he just uh, went to the buffet a bit too often. Now uh, the big guys are very annoying because they have because they have because they have an attack that can cause harm to not only you but both sides of well, like. Uh, they can harm themselves along with, um, or no, no, not themselves, sorry. Uh, uh, they can harm their teammates as well as you. There you go, there you go, that's better. So, uh, w uh what they'll do is that they will, uh, basically, uh, swing their arms in a, uh, in a, uh, circular motion. And once they have you, and from the first frame, if they have you in that attack, you will take several different, you'll take several pot shots. Because, um, invincibility frames are pretty non-existent in this game. That's probably the one thing I will say is a major slap in the nuts because of, because, um, I don't know, just, invincibility frames to me are a, are a sort of a, uh, they're sort of a uh, necessity. Know what I mean? But, eh, that's whatever. Anyway. Uh, but, yeah, so like, when they come up, I often go for them first. Just, uh, just in general. Because I don't want to freaking deal with those guys. Okay. I don't want to deal with the fucking, um, wind-up arms. I don't want to deal with, uh, losing health and getting game overs, uh, fucking left, right, and sideways. So, yeah. Just, it, it, it's annoying. It's annoying, that's all it is. Anyway, so, uh, now that we're playing as an Obelix right now, uh, I did want to mention something... Well, actually, hold on. Uh, I need to talk about this dude in the tree. 
Uh, I believe this was a reference to um, Asterix and the big fight where there was a Roman inside of a tree where he was meant to go on a spying mission. Though I could be wrong on that. I could be wrong. Um, but but uh, anyway, uh, the tree dudes cannot be um, uh, grabbed. Although you can do a lot of damage with 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 uh, Asterix's grab, because uh, because because what Obelix does is that he just lifts a character uh, by the shirt and either uh, and either pulls a Thor Loki or just slaps him across the face. And. And, of course, you can just, like, hit him as normal. Like, they don't necessarily have invincibility frames or whatever. You just need to hit them until, until like, they're not moving anymore and just wave the white flag. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, the slapping bit is probably the uh, the funniest thing about, uh, about, um, about, um, Obelix's, uh, grab. But, eh, anyway. So, now the barrel of magic potion is, is destroyed. What will we do? Well, well, if you know the story that this, that this chapter is based on, then you know well in hand what's going to happen next. But, just, but I'm just, I'm just going off of the uh, presumption that none of you know anything about this particular story. So, uh, okay. So, uh, just to um, r refresh your memory a bit, in the last video, uh, uh, Asterix noted that uh, Getafix, the druid, had 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 some herbs. Now, he did take them for a good reason. Well, not only uh, it was just because uh, Getafix uh, uh, probably said, "Here, have them. I don't have any use for them," but he also. I, I think he also said... Well, no, no, no. That, that, that doesn't make sense. Apologies. Apologies. Nearly gave uh, false information. Okay. Okay, yeah. And that's also another uh, another uh, running gag with, the, uh, with, with character names in this universe. They're either a pun, like... Like a... Like the word... No, hold on. So... The name of the chief is very long and uh, almost um, unreadable. Uh, that is a running joke, and that is one of the running jokes with character names. Aside from being something like uh, double entendres, like like uh, like Asterix's cousin name is anticlimax. So you know, it, it just uh, it's just one of those things. Oh, and also we are going to be finishing up this particular act today. Now, uh, don't get used to this because, uh, <laughs> oh boy, um, uh, some acts in this game go on for far too long, and I think this is one of them. Well, actually, no, that's uh, that is a bit unfair. This is the very first one, so uh, by comparison, it is a lot shorter. It's just. You know, as the game progresses, it gets too long for its own good, in my personal opinion. But hey, I'm I am not a a a a game designer, so I want to know. And also, right there is a good excuse to um uh, to uh, break the uh break uh break the environment because well, or, well, because I didn't see any other way around that. So you know, okay. So, I, uh, uh, let's see, we're going to talk about the gameplay. Oh, right, 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 right. So, I'm pretty sure you noticed that, um, that one of the, uh, uh, major things, one of the major things about this game is that you can just wail on a bunch of enemies all at once. And, and that, I believe, is actually true to the source material, you know, because, uh, a lot of times, Asterix and his friends would just pound several Romans all at once. So, 
you know. Oh, also, uh, don't do what I did here and avoid the holes because it's because they literally don't do anything. It's a uh, it it it's just there uh, for decoration. So, at least, at least that's how it is on the normal, on the uh, normal uh, difficulty. I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's an area hazard in the hard mode. I, 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 I am dreading hard mode. <laughs> So, you know, uh, don't do what I did, okay? Just fucking walk as normal. Anyway, so, um, another thing about the gameplay, and that, and that way it's a bit fun in my eyes, is just seeing the amount of, uh, amount of, uh, bodies you can, uh, stagger and hit all at once. Like, like, I get that's kind of like a standard, uh, beat-em-up thing, but, but from what little, uh, beat-em-up, what little, uh, beat-em-up experience I've played, um, you typically can only do one at a time, and that's about it. At least from my personal experience, do not take that as gospel. <laughs> I am, I, I, I am pretty sure that... I'm pretty sure that is just me being on crazy pills, but, you know. Oh, and here we have the first boss battle, uh, Centurion versus Asterix and Obelix. Every time there is a boss, that little uh, title graphic will will pop up, but with the uh, boss character instead of, instead of just uh, Centurion. Although be prepared to see him a lot because um, because there's because there's a there's a fair amount of times in the games where he is the main where he's a boss though um though uh, logistically if you want to get into it it's a different kind of centurion but if that's the case then why didn't they just color the armor differently? You know, just give us a little bit of visual variety instead of just uh, reusing the same uh, model over and over again, you know? Oh, and also, uh, enemies will keep on spawning in until the boss is defeated. So, uh, use the enemies to your advantage, like with, uh, like with, a uh, fucking, like, a. Uh, sorry, my brain's thinking too fast. Like, uh, Asterix, you know, with his, um, uh, with his, uh, spinning grab. Use that to your advantage. You know, uh, give yourself some breathing room along with doing some damage to the boss. Now, uh, speaking of the boss, there are a lot of enemies and there are a fair amount of enemies in this game that cannot be grabbed. And that can be kind of annoying. But so long as you have another enemy to whip around with Asterix, you will be good. And if you think, well, maybe that's what Obelix is for. No. No, 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 no. Obelix can't grab them either. Despite them being at roughly the same height, but, you know, it's whatever. Well, oh, uh, also, I probably should have mentioned this, but... Uh, basically, uh, the herbs that, uh, that, uh, that, that, uh, Getafix, uh, gave Asterix, that was actually tea. Yeah, so, pretty much Asterix, uh, gave, uh, Britain their, 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 uh, national drink. At least in this, at least in this universe. Because, uh, remember, this is an alternate history. Where all but one village was conquered by the Romans back in uh, 50 BC. So. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, this leads to a bit of a funny, uh, uh, a bit of a reoccurring gag in the franchise with, with, uh, the, with, uh, with the woman, Impedimenta, and, and her husband, the chief. Uh, basically... Uh, basically, the chief tries to act like the big man in charge, but really, it's his wife. And any guys out there who can relate? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. But it is kind of funny. Anyway, 
So basically what's going on here is that there's no uh, celebration feast just yet. Because at the end of a lot of Asterix stories, uh, 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 basically the two come home and they and, and the entire village has a feast that night. Usually it's a boar with uh, drinks and, you know, uh, whatever else is there, right? But this introduces us to a mini game, the first of many. Uh, basically, what you need to do is just um, uh, beat up wild boar. Now, I will admit this is probably my least favorite of the mini games because it just seems to end whenever the game says you're done. Like, this one isn't too bad. It's not as long as another one that... It's not as bad as another one that we're going to get into later, but still, like, this went on for way too long. Just, like, have a counter for how many boar we need, you know? Like, 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 what was wrong with that? You know, just, like, and, and, and if you did miss some, you can go back and, you know, grab, uh, grab the others. You know, like, like a, like a... Like, the stage loops until you're able to finally, um, uh, collect enough boar. But, but, who knows, maybe I'm just being too foolish here. And, yeah, sometimes you can miss, but, ugh, I, I really don't want to stay on this, I really don't want to stay on this, uh, on this, uh, minigame topic any longer than I have to, but, yeah... I I don't really like this one. So but I but I think it's coming up to an end soon. Oh, here it is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, like like the game just says, "Okay, okay, you're done. You're done. No more." And I really really don't like well, actually, actually, just for being myself. Sorry, sorry. But that's not enough uh, for the end of the game because, well, we're, well, we're like in, well, we're not even an hour in, and be a very short freaking game. Otherwise, it's like GBA quality. <laughs> um, but uh, we are going to also be invading a Roman camp. Or, or no, wait, or no, wait. Uh, we're not going to be doing that. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, we're going to get fish. Because, uh, well, for two reasons. Uh, one, Getafix needs it for his potion. And two, just to add a little bit more, uh, uh a variety for the feast. But, <laughs> well, fish, well, boar, fresh fish never ends. <laughs> oh, yeah, and this also brings to mind, uh, uh, uh this guy, uh, a fully automatics and this and this uh, other dude that I can't pronounce the name of. The uh, the running gag with those two is that the fishmonger claims that his fish are fresh when they smell like like they're rotting, and and that always leads to a fight in the village. Like like it it, it it's a staple. Of the franchise, you know, like, it's a tradition at this point. Oh, and now we're on to a pirate ship, which, again, you may want to get used to it because we're going to be on this particular boat a lot. This is also another uh, running gag with with the uh, series. Uh, basically, uh, whenever the Gauls go out to sea, pirates will always be involved somehow, and... And, like, even they know just how terrifying they are. So, they try to stay away from them. But sometimes it's unavoidable. So, yeah, you know. Now, uh, the pirate enemies are a little bit different. Because you have these guys with swords and these big guys with axes and whatnot, right? Now, uh, the axe guys are actually not are actually not very bad. You know, they... Uh, uh, they are big and they are kind of lumbering, but they don't have a charge attack, which I believe the twin sword guys do, but I could be wrong. 
Oh, and also you may have noticed that there was a that there was a black guy in the uh, crow's nest on the ship. Well, well, for one, I did kind of want to mention that it is kind of funny to um, to uh, bring the guy in the crow's nest down because because the logic is if you're high above the action, you're going to be safe from it. Nope. <laughs> Uh, but also, this brings to mind something that's not so funny about the, uh, Asterix series. There are racist, uh, uh caricatures in the comics. And it, it does put a bit of an unsettling taste in people's mouths, and I can totally see why. Like, like, I, I, I don't want to get into, uh, political matters, but... But it, it's a product of the time. You need to understand that. Like, this was... Like... Like, Asterix came about in the 1950s. Like, like stuff like that was commonplace at the time. Like, yes, it... Like, uh, uh, society has phased it out, but, you know, you shouldn't knock it for, you know, not... Oh, sorry. Uh, this is the pirate boss, Captain uh, Redbeard, and you're going to be seeing him a lot too, trust me. Whenever there is a pirate ship, expect the boss to be him, always. But he's actually kind of annoying, because when he's down, he will do a a, 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 a freaking recovery animation, which is just him spinning, uh, spinning along the floor, and that spin can hurt you because he has his sword. So... You know, it, it's a little, it's a little bit annoying, and and also the bosses do tend to guard your attacks, but but you know you can just, but you know you can find ways to get around that, and because and, and honestly I think just for boss battles alone I prefer Asterix over Obelix because Obelix's attacks are a little bit slower, and they don't have as much reach in my opinion, like like e. You saw what I did just there, right? Like, I had to switch out Obelix for Asterix. Although, should be noted that it doesn't matter who dies, if it's Asterix or Obelix. If you're playing a single player, you will get a game over if if um, one of them dies. So, it's a bit like, uh, have you seen the um, ABGN episode about, uh, about uh, Beavis and Butthead games? It's kind of like that. But thankfully, once he's down, there will be no more enemies except what's already on screen. So, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, right. The 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 caricatures that that were in um, Asterix's comics. Um, like if you are gonna read them, just bear in mind they are there. But, but. It's not meant to... Well, actually, no, that, that doesn't fucking work. Sorry. Um, like, just don't make a big... No, 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 it doesn't work either. Frig, I am bad at this, aren't I? <laughs> like, the caricatures are a product of the... Are a product of the time. And I think that's what a lot of people need to realize. It's a product of the time. Like how a lot of um, uh, 90s, 90s comic stories and costumes were a product of the 90s. You know, that's what executives thought cool and edgy was at the time. But it, 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 falls, some, it, it falls under the uh, 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 same umbrella, you know? But anyway, so... Oh, oh, uh, oh, that's right, that's right. Uh, this is a Just for Kicks. He's a character from Asterix and the Nords. And and that was actually and, and that was actually turned into a movie. But we'll get to that in the next video. So if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Oh, and also if you oh, and also if you want to say that I'm wrong about my assumption on uh, uh, asterisks and um, 
and um, racist caricatures, please do that in the comments down below. Just don't, just don't make a big fuss about it, okay? I do read them, okay? Just put it out there. Okay, uh, and the next milestone that we will be celebrating is 500 subscribers. And if possible, I'd like to hit that by June. So until next time, Social Goons, remember, reach for the stars.